It's Lawful Stupid Season 2, boys! Wait, 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 wait. Season 2, we're back! I wasn't on. even ready! That's it. Excellent! Welcome back. <laughs> How is that different than Season 1? It's not. It's, it's not, not. But, but more okay. interesting. Is it? Is it? Um, I hope so, so. If you haven't listened to Season 1, boy howdy are you behind. Um... But if I were to give you a sum up of what happened from the DM's perspective, uh, the boys got a cool magical loot. The loot betrayed them. They did some dangerous stuff at a weird tinkerer house. They went traveling, <laughs> avoided quests, went to a main city, found bad demon things, got their ass kicked, waged war, kicked ass, ass, met gods multiple times, and Became then gods. went their own way. They can go your own way. So, Go your own way. If you haven't listened to season one, I suggest you don't take that one minute recap as anything more than one minute worth of things that happened. You should go listen to Absolutely it. Absolutely go listen. Um, but boys, are you guys ready? <sighs> yes. Wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let me just. I need you uh, to dial nose. in your characters. Mm -hmm. Hold on a Yeah, I'm doing it. No nose in air glass of wine i am christian i am ready. okay let's see uh normal me ready go confirmed alex is pouring a drink so yes he's ready he's gonna do his ritual yep he is getting ready and will be much closer to his mic when we actually record it's gonna be great Confirmed. Right. Okay. You're right. Great. So we're going to um, just kind of like time lapse that voyage from your uh, respective locations to um, the new location that we're going to be at. And it's mm. it's different. We're, we're leaving. We're leaving the continent of Eos, the region of Orenthal. And we're going home. Well, homish. We're going to Whisper War. Coming home. I'm coming home. Tell the world that I'm coming home. <laughs> All right, so, two minutes in, we've already had three sing-alongs. Hey, we're so... Hey, by the way, patrons, we're real close to that musical goal. FYI, tell your friend. Like, real, real close. Uh, so, you... You boys are headed for Whisper Wall. And each of you all know that not only are you going for uh, Whisper Wall, you specifically are going towards mm, the Broken Shoal. And so you go to this, uh, this large cove. Um, and as, so let's paint said picture. Uh, Devin, you have crawled your way onto this beach. The boat that you, uh, the drunken son that you one man, um, navigated here is, see, it sunk when you hit it into shoreline. <laughs> uh, you brought it way too close. And so now on the coast, near where these other, like, because in the distance, there's ships already. And they're very much like battleships. They're very much uh, troop transport ships. And then there's the remnants of the Drunken Sun, which is um, partially in view, just a cusp the ocean line. And so you drag yourself up onto this beach and um you're recovering doing whatever you choose to do and it's not 30 minutes to an hour later that rowan and um christoph roll up to the beach in dinghies like separate dinghies with like uh first mates and 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 people from their ships and so you you have them breaching or, or like landing on this beach 
and you're just like exhausted from having to swim in from the sea, but you're all here. Uh, so a couple things that I need to know mm -hmm. from this scene that you've set for me. One, do I notice the remnants of the drunken sun? Absolutely. It is not a small thing that there is a ship. Do I recognize it as the drunken sun, though? Ooh, roll me that history check. God, I, just, I, I, I gotta come in quick on these rolls. Every time we play this game, I'm like, let me just get a quick history check in so I can be the first to roll. Ooh, that's pretty good. Uh, 17. Yeah, you, uh, on your way in, you see the wreckage of a ship, and it's not until you, like, just, you're just watching and you're looking, and at some point, I think the, the, the water splashes enough that you can see the emblem that was um, painted on one of the sides that matched the flag, and you went, mm, that's super the drunken sun. Cool. Um, second thing I need to know, did I notice Rowan coming in on his dinghy with his crew? Uh, I think the closer you, you would have gotten on the beach, like closer to the beach and your, your boats kind of naturally heading towards each other, you definitely would have seen it well before you landed. Uh, so what Kristoff is going to do is he's going to shape water along his path to make an ice bridge and just walk over to Rowan's boat. Wait, before you land? Or... Yes. Okay, so I uh, take that back. You land together in the same dinghy. To get, as always. I, I was OTP. going to, to race him, but I decided it would be cooler just fucking ice man my way over to him. I think it, it definitely causes disruption and a little bit of panic. Yes when the two boats are like connected via this ice bridge for a moment Kristoff is inconvenient to everyone around him at all time because he is Kristoff confirmed season one happened yep yeah. uh, so boys you're back together and not just through winds sick twisted jokes that's very apropos way of describing this campaign so far so Devin, Atlas has been um, just face first, maybe not face first, but certainly uh, lots of sand everywhere. Um, and then you look up to see Kristoff and Rowan not having nearly as hard of a time as you and very friendly with each other. Have you boys been together the whole time? No, I just, I, I, we met in the ocean. Yeah, this is the first time in like two years. Well, 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 I mean, besides you that know. weird thing last week, I don't, I don't know what that was about. So just give me a breather. You guys do your dialogue. I, I got to rest for a minute. <laughs> yeah, a couple of things, a couple of things. Uh, no, I have mostly questions for you. Um, so I'll, I'll give you a moment. Moments pass. I don't want to be tired of the whole <laughs> time. <laughs> <laughs> this is the whole episode season all of season two I'm seeing very <laughs> um so first of all hey remember last time are you a fucking werewolf yes that's a fair question well I just told you the answer that's it. I am I did some things we can get into a little later uh, probably more pressing things we need to get into yeah, second, um, I don't, I, I actually only saw your dinghy and I didn't see you come ashore at all. Who's here with the, with the golden sun? Who's here with... That's it. Captain Renwick Tindall and... They all... First mate Giselle? We were, uh... What? We were, we were riding together for a long time. And eventually some other pirates came up and they just, they, they overtook us. There were two or three ships and we couldn't, and we, so we, we were headed here. They were going to bring me and... I managed to get out alive. Alaria, of course, helped me. I... Fuck, I would normally insight roll the shit out of you, but Kristoff has no reason to think that Alice would ever lie to him, so I will not. You lying son of a bitch. <laughs> I almost kept talking, God, but I knew that would give me away. <laughs> 
Well, three ships was ambitious. Kristoff says nothing, um, reaches into his pocket, turns around and walks away. Rowan, I missed your hat. I miss you. You look awful. I feel awful. It just has not been a good time for you, has it? It's not. Uh, I would love to tell you boys about my adventures. But perhaps, I don't know if there's a reason why we're all here. We, we better hop to it. It seemed it was pretty urgent. That's true. Hey, you still talking to your ghost girlfriend? Yeah, did she see that? I pull Laurie yeah, out. That's great. You brandish your blade, uh, and Alaria's spectral form appears. And boys, what you notice that's a little bit different is the uh, the version of Alaria you saw before was transparent, pretty uh, colorless, all con- all things considered. Uh, this version, you can see her pink hair more. You can almost see like a tone to her skin. She's not solid by any means, but she's certainly less transparent. It looks like she has more, um, uh, more of an this. form in the world. That's. I mean, it's been a minute. She didn't look like that before. She's wispy. Yeah, I, I don't know. Why don't you tell? Ask her. She's right there. That's kind of rude to just like ignore her while she's there. Alari, what you been doing for two years? And she looks back at Rowan and says, Oh, we've been killing a lot. That's true. Like, a lot. Well, so he's strong now, right? I look he's over He's stronger. Her. We've, a lot of those hmm. demon things that came into Oxbane, they, they are nothing to me now. We see one, it takes seconds for me to ruin one. He's very brave now. It's important. Cool. I have done done nothing. <laughs> While they're having this conversation, I've been reaching out to Avia via our uh, coin of arsky. Cool. We will resolve that in a moment. And so Alaria says, he's also not... He is very proud of his actions. Those fiends are a tad more difficult than he lets on, but we do murder them. If we did that two years ago, we already did that. Yeah, but as a unit, he does it alone. He's much stronger. And there are many, many more than you than we ever could have thought. Was there? There are still doors out there that that are that are open now. And I feel like we still honestly have more work to do. If, that, if we don't close those doors, there's way more bad things to come than just those demons. That's fair. I don't know how. Okay. First off, who so, are you talking well, to? Yeah, well, okay, that's... Uh, hold on. <laughs> Doodle doo, doodle doo, first season two. Doodle doo, doodle doo, doodle doo. Excellent. So you walk away and put said coin and pull out said coin and kind of, um, I don't think you need to pull it out. I think just touching it. I, you still have to verbally talk, whether that's like whispering, I think it's still fine. Um, but you still have to verbally speak to activate it. So how does that work? Or how do you start? Avia. Are you okay? And, um, she, it takes her a a minute and she says, I am. Are you busy? Uh, uh, and you hear like someone like pleading in the background. Like you can't really hear what they're saying, but you hear, not not that busy. What's going on? I, um, I have something to tell you. I think it's best if you're alone with you. Yeah, hold on one sec. And you hear this loud thud? We're alone now. Are you, um, are you able to sit down? 
if I need to, I suppose. Ah, there's no easy way to say this. Captain Winwick Tyndall, first mate Zell, the entire crew of the Drunken Sun. They have, they have been killed. Uh, and you are met with like a loud ringing noise in your ear. Mm -hmm. And a few minutes later, you can like hear uh, the sound of her like picking up her coin. Um, and she says, What do you mean they're all dead? I've seen when I got here to this wall, I was greeted by sunken ship. Uh, I didn't recognize it at first, but as I grew closer, it was very obvious it was the drunken sun. Uh, they had apparently given passage to Atlas when they were set upon at the sea. Atlas was able to fight them off, but he was the only one who survived. He's, he's not a sailor, so he evidently crashed the ship while trying to bring it in to land. He said there were no survivors. I want to know exactly who killed them. I'm going to raise everything they built. Can you find out who killed them? I, I will find this out for you. I will keep you apprised as I love more. I felt I had I appreciate it. Is there anything that you need other than more information than anything? That there was a box on the ship that I gave to Captain Zell. If it's still there and you can get to it, it has something I gave him. And if it's still there, it could be useful for us. Uh, point of order, Did you, you said Captain Zell. Do you mean Zell or Tyndall? Sorry, uh, first mate, Zell. First mate, Zell. Um, un understood. Uh, I, will, I will see what I can do. And I will talk to you. Be careful. And uh, that's for your uh, Atlas. Uh, who are you talking to over there? Uh, Avia. Oh, Avia. How is she? Not great. And so Atlas will, like, it clicks for him that Avia was with. Um, the Drunken Son and, and is affiliated with that. Oh, yeah. I will tell her I'm very sorry. I will, but you'll, I'll need to tell her quite a bit more than that. Um, I'll need more information about this attack and perhaps the perpetrators themselves. But um, for now, I, uh, Rowan, Atlas, if you would. And I gesture towards the uh, the open sea. I'll go over. I'm just I'm gonna ice man my way over to the ship. Okay, you guys, uh, you roll uh, an ice bridge out across uh, the sea, and um, the like the crews that delivered you <clears throat> are very much just like looking. And you hear, if you could do that, why don't we bring about out a boat? I don't like walking. Okay. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> you guys cross this uh, icy bridge, and it's like a long walk. So if you if you want to do uh, a little more dialogue as you walk, you have that option, um, because it's not a short walk from the beach to uh, the boat. Uh, I'd like to consider the um, the state of the ship. Does it look like it's just been wrecked on some rocks, or does it look like it's been attacked? Are there cannon holes that I can see? Um, how how far do you want to wait until you do this check? Because that measures your chance for success. So I'm gonna 
I'm going to ask Atlas first to tell me the nature of the attack, um, and then I'll be investigating exactly. I was kind of trying to confirm his story. Um, so, I, I, what happened, Atlas? Tell me everything. Well, it was about two weeks ago. After many travels with Maria in search of in search of uh, many of the demon doors, so losing my eye, we, we found that to no avail, we wouldn't be able to do this by our own. But then I received a raven, and it said, you need to come to silence. And so uh, we traversed for a little while, and I can't remember how I stumbled upon the drunken son. But it was, it was nice being in the presence, and I said, I, I, I have an immediate uh, need. I need to make it to silence. I'm not sure why. Uh, they were more than happy to oblige. And about a week ago, on the way here, uh, I was asleep in the bottom of the boat, and I heard yells above on the deck. And as I went up, there were three uh, larger ships that were surrounding us on all sides. The, the sails were black, they, they had cross swords, on the sails, um, men were already aboard the, the, the ship fighting, back and forth. So immediately I, I ran back down, grabbed my, uh, my axe, along with Aloria, and we just we started fighting. And I don't remember what happened, I, it just went into a frenzy. Most of them had, most of them had been there. We were outnumbered by far. At some point I blacked out. Uh, two of the ships had went away, one remained, but it was, it was mostly sunken. And as I lay there, Captain Tyndall uh, had been mortally wounded, but he was not yet dead. And he told me to take the ship. And he told me that he uh, you know, had appreciated uh, my help and that he was sorry. Um, and then of course, I cannot drive a boot, Will. And that is where you see today. I intended to give them a proper burial for those I could find, but... Uh, he decided, he said, you know, the sea was his home, and so he told me to cast the bodies overboard. Three ships in the dead of night. Uh, what kind of... I'm just, I can't fathom, but they had the arcane bombardments. They weren't able to at least get some distance, and they, I mean, the Golden Sun is known, the Marfee is known for their speed. Let's see, they couldn't create some space and escape? I do not know. They were already locked in battle once I had gotten up, so whatever had occurred, for whatever the reason, the ships were sneaky enough to get into distance without being seen. See, that, that doesn't ring true, so I will roll an insight check. If I may, Dwayne. Uh, I, uh, <clears throat> so here's what I'll do with that. Mm-hmm. I will let you roll a contest, but it is not true or false like with a PC. It is it it is or an NPC. It's the feeling that you get. Yeah, the I got it. Okay, just making Absolutely. sure that it's not a hard bat. Uh, so uh, Atlas charisma check and uh, Christoph insight check, please, or deception check, Atlas. Uh, I got a four, uh, deception. Okay, that gives yeah fourteen. Uh, insight is well it's negative one so 17 okay so uh, you hear his story and it's not adding up you don't necessarily necessarily believe he is flat out lying to you you don't get that flat out lie feel but you definitely get there is something you're missing and it's not forthcoming at all like you you have a bad feeling about the story but you can't say exactly why it's not like you're like oh that's a bull-faced lie but you have a lot of facts yeah. like the murphy's is fast they have long-ranged weaponry um and match uh, an, a team of magic users uh not to say other pirates don't have those either and you're aware of that but you also knew them to be quite formidable um so not adding up great for you this this is this doesn't make a lot of sense. Your memory is failing us. Um, there must be something more here. I, I, maybe we'll understand more when we get closer. Yeah, I, and I would love, if I can remember any, I'd love to give you any details I can remember. 
Uh, I don't know if maybe Alaria has anymore. Maybe she remembers anything. Oh yes, uh, let me ask Alaria. You could bring her out. Well, she just she could come out. She doesn't like. Oh, Alaria, if you can, if you listen. Uh, so let's be clear on how Alaria works. Um, she does come at your beck and call. Atlas, so like if you draw her and just want her to come out, she's kind of forced out in general. Um, but yeah, you she can come and go at her own leisure as well. She's much stronger, like she's much more tied to the world than she was in season one. But I just want you to know, like, you definitely have the right to like snuff her out 90% of the time. Um, so she like comes out and she's like walking next to you guys. But, like, you guys are walking on the ice bridge. She's just walking above water. Like, she walks just to, like, make you guys feel normal. And mm. she says, uh, <clears throat> yes. So this is the first time I've seen her. I actually was busy when she came out earlier. Right. So I think between what I was picking up during the one shot and then seeing her now, for sure, no, this is not good. Um... Alaria, you look... Where? Thank you. I like the mask. Thank you, it was a gift. Um... So, what what can you tell me about what happened aboard the ship? I, Atlas seems to not have a great memory, but you perceive things, even when he's unconscious or frenzied. What, what can you tell me? Do me a favor and roll a perception check. No. You are good. Um it's it's uh eight. No, I no, I agree. You are good. When you say no, I believe you. <laughs> you say um no. So so what Kristoff does not see, um, but for the viewers or the listeners, she exchanges a glance with Atlas and then says I'm afraid I didn't see anything out of the normal. They definitely had magic too, but this wasn't anything good at hand. Fair there's enough. Maybe I can. When there's what was the nature of? Go ahead. What was the nature of this magic they wielded? It was arcane. It seemed oh, like perfect. they had similar spell uh, the Murphy's did, but I don't know a lot about pirate. Yes, it's good that it's arcane. Maybe I can um, see any sort of scarring or unnatural residue from the torrent when we when we arrive at the ship. Maybe oh, I'm sure you'll answers. see something. Disconcerting. <laughs> Is it? Oh, All I, right. I'm sorry. Uh, it was just one of those like, we'd love to have you for dinner <laughs> kind of statement. Did All you right. say that in character? Is that, uh, yes. Okay, yes. and uh, she says, I'm, I'm sorry, it's... It was brutal. If there's not arcane scarring, I would be surprised. It was a blood bath. But I'm just glad you both made it out safe. I'm surprised Atlas made it out safe. He's gotten much stronger. Uh, and then I'll just head to the ship. Uh, it, yeah. Whenever we get close yeah. to anything, I know No, you are. You're coming it. right up on it. Go ahead and roll your investigation check. It's better. Investigation's not my strong suit, but that's better. Oh, it's just zero. Fifteen. Uh, all right. So as you're coming up, so the part of the, excuse me, the red sun, or the red sun, you got me fucking saying it, if the drunken sun is the the front of the boat. So you can see, um, uh, not go nautical terms, so going to avoid them. You can see the front of the boat and mm -hmm. the deck. You can see bits and pieces of the mast. It's kind of like beat up and, and 
you can definitely tell even from standing um, near it that like one of its primary mast is all that like survived the fight. Um, and there was a, like there's two other poles that were broken or well, sorry, not survived the fight uh, that are still intact. Um, but what you do notice is you don't see any like huge like structural damage above the boat like above the base of the boat yeah. right like on the bottom of the boat you can kind of see just below the the like the shallowness of the water where there's like damage to the hole like at the bottom of the hole um we'll have to get probably on board for me to tell this but my next step is to see if i can tell um if the arcane bombardment cannons had been fired at all recently um, yeah, why don't you guys, uh, make your way onto the boat? Yeah. Boys, go ahead, and please don't leave this all <laughs> to, uh, Kristoff to make the yeah, talk only th- episode. I have no horse in this race. <laughs> I could care less what that boat's doing here or anything else. <laughs> okay. Confirmed. Atlas, you want to do anything, or are we just going to keep going I'm just on this following him. I, So in, in Atlas's head, he's rehearsed a thing with a large... In his head, he's rehearsed this a thousand times. Um, he doesn't want to lie, but he also doesn't want to break Shane, or excuse me, Rowan and Kristoff's heart. Um, he, didn't really, he wasn't really thinking about Avia so much uh, in this whole thing. Um, but now knowing that Avia is in pretty deep with Kristoff that they still are contacted like you know together he's got a million things going through his head but he still does not want to be found out hail and well met my dudes and dudettes it's me Dwayne from the Lawful Stupid Podcast and I'm going to give you a sneak peek of our patron only content and this is going to be one of Atlas's letters so I'm just going to give you a sneak peek of my impression of Atlas dear diary My father, Henry, thought it was a good idea for me to attend Battleborn. He knew that I enjoyed being a smithy, but that I often longed for more. I would see the men and women come to him for items, though Henry only made weapons or armor that were decorative. Otherwise, we were in the business of making farm equipment. That's just a small tidbit of that with my best Atlas impression. So if you want to see or hear more or read more, go become a patron. Okay, so he's, he's so just kind of he's, he's keep trying to keep it cool. You know, this thing happened and and because he knows Kristoff is, is, is not satisfied. Uh, all right, boys, you climb up onto the boat. Um, with uh it's it's difficult to get up onto the boat in its state but you're all very capable adventurers you don't need to make a check just know that it, um was not like an easy task for you guys to get up there and when you are up on the boat because of the way it's like slanted into the air it's very much like slow walking and like leaning back and trying to like avoid sliding into the water um so now you're on the boat and you can see the state of the arcane uh uh like the focuses the arcane focuses um they're very much intact physically um if you would like to investigate them you may do an arcana check thank you i would like to mention i would think that we had shot these things several times anticipating uh you someone find we would we would scratch up the deck we would um scratch up the mask so, maybe not break them because we needed right. it to work so um i will give you this my boy because i know you did not expect to be um like going down this road i will, attorney by shane so i will give you one i fucking don't even know what to do so we're just gonna roll it as like an intelligence check Woof. essentially okay that you and uh Whoa. Olaria wanted to like uh avoid like this is the to, to catch a killer in reverse yeah, fucking opportunity 
Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. So sorry. Hey, you don't have the ability so- to fire the cannons. Like at all? It, it, I was about to say it makes sense that he would like scratch it up and he would do damage, but like right. I'm trying to see if this thing has been fired. No, recently, I agree, which I don't but think. I wanted to like give yeah. him that opportunity to lay some ground of like, oh, I did. Some... So but then I would 10... ask, how long? How long does is he able to like look into when it was shot last? Because if he could see arcane, then it would just be like everything has got magic flowing through it. We will get there, my dude. Don't you worry. I'm all I'm doing is asking. With a 10, you were able to set up some minor, um, like, evidence? So give me, like, a little bit of uh, what you guys attempted to do to to make it look like there was indeed a raid on the boat. Okay, that's, that's easy. I think it's just a lot of stru- uh, you know, minor structures. So, like, the railings uh, are cracked in several places. Um, there are several cargo pieces of cargo. Um, that we smash and, and we threw, you know, some of it out to the sea, of course. Uh, we tore a couple of the flags that still fly. Um, we probably break, again, I don't know what that front thing is that sticks off the boat that people often have. That is, that's gone. Um, okay. It, the below deck okay. has been tossed. Good. Stuff like that. Okay, well, we'll, we'll get to uh, how that kind of stuff rolls out because you have water, right, filling up the boat. Um, so... You, what did you roll? I apologize, my friend. Arcana. Uh, it was an unnatural 20. Unnatural 20. So you look at um, uh, the first two focuses you see, and uh, A, the focuses themselves are not necessarily magical in um, like nature. They don't necessarily always give off a magical vibe. It's just that when you course through, it's like a giant amplification point. Um, kind mm-hmm. of like when you put your hands to a cone to your mouth. Your hands do not make noise, but damn, do they amplify it. Um, so you don't see any arcane torrent, um, like, on them. Um, there's no, like, residue. Uh, so your you, uh, Kristoff being the caster, you know that if there was, uh, like, if they were utilized... It had to have been, like, long ago. And you would know that time frame specifically. Um, like, Atlas would not have that knowledge of, like, how long it like would have had to have been for that um, magic to wear off. It was to fade, yeah. Yep. Is it greater than two weeks? Y- yes, you would definitely believe that. Okay. okay. Um... I, I'll tell you what, I'm, Christoph's just going to walk up to Atlas and I'm just going to put a hand on either side of his face so I'm kind of reaching up and I'm going to look at him in his eye and I'm just going to say this is important to someone who I owe a great, great I owe her a debt. All debts are paid no matter what how much we run, no matter how much we hide, all debts are paid. I need your help. Is there anything that you can remember, no matter how insignificant, anything that you're not telling? Uh, inside, Atlas's heart breaks, but he still does not want to come clean. Um, he still manages to have a single tear come down because he is sad about it. He's not happy about what he did. Uh, and, I, and he says, I'm sorry, Christoph. I, I don't remember anything else. Uh, real quick, as someone who's actually seen pirate battles, can I do like a perception to see if this actually makes sense and is concordant? Well, welcome to the game, game Alex Gore! <laughs> Yeah, man, like, I'm just so glad like, of you to join us. Just because at first, like, walking up, I would not care about this so much. But, like, being on there and then listening to the story and be like, mm. My dude, can we start off season two correctly and give you that lawful, stupid inspiration for 30 minutes into the pirate <laughs> investigation going, Wait, I was on a fucking pirate. pirate ship for a while. Do I notice yeah. anything? Well, just as the stuff he's setting up, like, mm, the figurehead wouldn't be gone. They're not a ramming ship. No, they wouldn't have cargo out unless they were already sacked. And if they were already sacked, he wouldn't have been able to get away with the ship. This isn't making sense to me as a human being, so there's no way Rowan would settle for this shit. Don't roll. even roll! Just say those words! Give me a perception with uh, lawful well, stupid advantage. Alright. 
That is the lawful oh, stupidest shit. thing we've done in a while. That's a 23 <laughs> without the lawful stupid oh, advantage. I thought oh, you were going to do with advantage. I got like a six, boys. I mean, I can roll a grin. Hopefully, get I mean, roll for grin. Yeah, no, it was a 10 with that, so. Yeah, we are okay. 23. Um, Rowan, as someone with. Uh, who, who spent a great deal at sea and who has seen um, you you specifically were not on um, the receiving end of too many beatings um, but you definitely know what a ship looks like after it's been beat to shit um, right this one is it looks like there was a, a kerfuffle at minimum um, but the story with three ships in your mind two things happen one a fight did not occur or b the other three ships were the worst pirates ever so you do have two scenarios to contend with okay then that's super easy because the murphy's was good and i know that so there's no way three shitty pirates would still be able to beat one good one so atlas um I hate to say this but that's not what happened here. This might have, there might have been a scuffle on this, but this isn't a three against one fight against this ship. But, but of course it is. Of course, it's not the figurehead's gone, which doesn't make any sense because the Murphys wouldn't ram anything ever. The cargo's thrown about as if it had been ransacked, and if it had already been ransacked, how did you get away with it? I told you the battle, everyone was killed. I, I blacked out. I don't know what happened during the fight. Oh, two no. The ships, this would be after the fight. Two, two of the ships left after several of those sailors had been killed. And either they had been killed, had been kidnapped, they were all gone, save Captain Tyndall, who had been wounded. I tell you what, um, so Atlas, on the side of your face, you def because my hands are still there, you definitely feel things get real cold for a second, and then Kristoff kind of like pulls away, like gaining control of himself. You feel um, that through a metal mask, BT dubs. Remember, he's got a metal mask, so it's actually trans like your whole face feels it, because that's how metal spreads, like cold. Yeah. You feel that all over your face. Um and and then I Tell me something Atlas would know. Only Atlas. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you! That's a fair question! I know it is, but God, was it amazing. You think we're doing a, a Body Snatchers episode to you now? Yeah, I, I, think you're, I think you're trying to flip the script on me. Um, oh, we, Shane, you give us way too much credit. Oh, uh, yeah. We have... And I look around at Rowan and say... Uh, the loot of when we fought to get that together. Um, Common knowledge, the reclaimers know that. No, I didn't. Yes, and um, what's the pertinence of that to this? Uh, this isn't a ship, it's a loot. Findle has been in my mouth several times and has touched your horns on many occasions. Anyone who's met Findle would know that. Uh, my favorite food is hard biscuits from the Red Roof Inn. But I... Citizens day in and day out saw you eat an unfathomable amount of this. Uh, you wanted, oh, maybe, maybe this, when we went to see the Tinkerer, you wanted to take the door back to the prison for whatever reason and turn it in as a prisoner, and you also let him go. Yeah, but that means you could just be him, who was also an enemy of ours, I be the, working I be for the him. <laughs> in disguise. Okay. That makes it. Tell me something only Atlas would know. I have no idea what I would know that others don't know. I'm an open book. You're right. There's yeah, nothing Atlas would know. That just sounds like something Atlas would say. say. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> You've got me there. Fair enough. Um, you'll just... Time can change a man, surely, but... None of this makes sense, Atlas. Give me something. Give me... I want to believe you. Give me a reason to believe you. I can tell you what. I mean, 
could start with the truth. I don't believe anything you just said about this. What not, what not what is their what is their like what are you what are you guys like stances toward me at this point? Like you're looking at me, you're questioning me, I'm just I'm standing there receiving the, I'm on this receiving end, of course. Um <laughs> let me translate. Are you threateningly standing? Are you like inquisition style? Is it more casual conversation? It's more of like concern for him, like something has it's happened. Pleading. Yeah, like what is going on here? Yeah, but, it's absolutely concerning. Yeah, non-threatening at all. Uh, to be fair, Kristoff almost lost his temper, but then did come back to a place of concern. How close are we to the edge of the ship? I mean, I don't know. I, I did not have you, Matt. Uh, let's say um, five feet from mid-center, so you got like a 20-foot, 30-foot sprint to the edge. Okay, I'm not running it. So it was the last thing you said. It's right? a great question. How about the truth? Because he doesn't believe anything you said so far. Yeah, in regards to the ship. Pull Laurie out. Hmm? Uh, Laurie. Yeah. As much as. This is me. This ain't. And I'll look back up at the boys. Christoph. Again, in tears. Tears are streaming. Christoph. <clears throat> Rowan. At this point, I'm going to drop to my knees. Head bowed. It was me. Killed them all. That's where the podcast stops. So that's the end of episode one. Period. The end. So let's <sighs> paint the picture. Let's paint the picture that you have this Inquisition style uh, conversation, and it's it's very much out of concern. So you see Kristoff, who's bouncing between confusion, mainly because he solves puzzles quickly concern because avia is distraught over this news and then you have rowan who is very much no listen i was a pirate and this is all malarkey and wants it to be solved and done with because he is not feeling this whole adventure onto this broken boat and so you have this half of the drunken son half a third of the drunken son like piercing into the air from the ocean and Atlas who drops to his knees and essentially confesses with Alaria agape. Just like she's standing very neutral, but her face and her eyes is just what the fuck are you doing? And that's where we're going to end episode one of season two. Oh God. Ugh. His head started off thick with the drama. It was perfect. I was, I was really waiting. He was, for he was, he was waiting for it. Yeah, he was like, "Ooh, I'm looking him. Ooh, I can see him chopping at the bed. Oh, like, I'm gonna, gonna fuck him it. up." I was, I was, I'm watching the timer, and I'm like, "Oh, it's getting close. The episode's gotta end soon." And then I'm like, "Oh wait, this is gonna be good. What are we gonna end on?" So that's what we're gonna end on. Uh, so boys, mm -hmm. first of all, welcome back to the regular podcast. It feels Welcome great. back to Thunderdome, where three PCs enter and only one leaves. <laughs> so, bye. And it'll probably be fucking Kristoff because he can't die. You know what I uh, love about you boys? I super did some additional prep tonight. I was like, I'm going to make sure I have everything I need. We haven't we get off the done fucking anything. We are on the We're beach. resolving season and one. And the in-between time. Yeah. We went back. Dude, yeah, I was even the mad. Down. I just realized I can do 10 minutes of prep for 7 hours of stuff. <laughs> That's all. No I mean, worries. So let us 100%. talk for a little bit. We'll figure it out. Yeah, but the, the one time you'd only do 10 minutes of prep, like, alright, let's bury through. Let's just get this. Let's move. 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 No, no. Hey, we gotta stay focused. <laughs> yep, exactly. Oh, shit. Uh, is there anything you boys uh, want to say? Uh, I just want to say thank you so very much. Uh, for joining us in season two, and thank you so much, everyone who rolled for humanity. 
in December. Uh, this episode's coming out in December, obviously, but our, our charity rolls are done. Uh, they were given to World Builders. Over $200 were collected for World Builders Bro. from just Rolls for Humanity. Um, you are amazing. Thank you. Uh, by the time you listen to this, the charity uh, drive is over. Um, over uh, As of tonight, I've received word over $1 million collected Whoa. in World Builders uh, over the course of two weeks. That is amazing. You're all perfect and wonderful creatures of this world and others, and I love you. Thank you for so much for what you do. That is unreal. I love it. Does any of the other boys want to say anything, or are we just going to walk this one right on home? Well, we got we to just tell about this. We have uh, DrawCon going on in July, and we have been invited yeah. graciously by Nerd Asylum to uh, be one of the, the main shows there, along with D&D Grandma, and there's a couple other they have coming in, but we are just, we're so thankful, one, to be even thought of in such a situation. And so we'll be doing that July 12th or the 14th, if I'm correct, boys, on that one. Um, you can Great. get early bird tickets now. Go to I think it's nerdasylum.com, uh, or is it or I can't remember. Com, or uh, actually, drawlicon.com is coming live in the next couple weeks, so probably just wait for that. Um, that's it. Yep. That's going to be the official convention site. It's going to have kind of more specifics and have tickets on there, early bird specials, um, things like that. Uh, lodging maybe question mark, uh, but it, more details to come. It's, it's still in the early kind of planning phase, but. Um, July 12th to the 14th if you want to go ahead and mark your calendars uh, it's in Indiana Fort Wayne Indiana if you can make it you want to come say hi we'll be running tables we'll be doing um, a few different panels we'll be doing a live show um, we'll be doing um, a sermon uh, <laughs> done by me uh, the D&D priest uh, we'll be giving uh, all kinds yeah, of running cool tables. stuff we're going to have a booth set up with um, yeah we're running tables for an adventure that's going to tie in question mark to the live show we're gonna have guest stars from D D grandma um they'll be gonna be doing panels it's just gonna be a lot of fun there's gonna be so much game going on so much merch so much good stuff that you can get um and just come out and hang out with us and other people um it's uh, i think the hours are eight mm-hmm. to five for the convention friday saturday sunday and then uh <laughs> welcome to D D after dark i'm your host uncle shane saw where we'll be getting fucking riggedy right uh, confirmed uh, will be hung over every day I'll be taking care of the that boys every single, every single one um, uh, I don't get yeah, hung over we will all be you don't get hung over if you just keep I, I want to also mention that all of our $20 patrons we did not ever suspect when we made that tier that you would actually get front row seats to anything we were ever going to do but we you get front row seats as promised because we said we would deliver that uh, I believe that's fifty dollars. Even better, go be it's a fifty dollars patron, and you'll get a first. So the only fifty dollars patron who also gets to listen to Jesus all our recording right sessions, so he's hearing this actively. Avon, thank you so much. If you like front row tickets, all you have to do is make it to Fort Wayne, Indiana, July twelfth through fourteenth, and we will be waiting for you. Uh, <laughs> Speaking yeah. to you directly in the future. So, uh, <laughs> two two things uh, we're gonna walk out on. Uh, it's very important to note, and we'll have details as they come up. Um, the tables will be ticketed um, because yeah. will, we already are anticipating too much demand. Um, they will be a, an additional charge that we don't know. It's, ideally, it's not super a lot, but really we have to work with the convention to see what their rules are. Um, mm-hmm. I will be doing a world building workshop which will also be a ticketed event. Um, and again, I don't, we don't have the prices yet, but we do have a couple um, ticketed events where you can throw a little dollar signs, get in on some, some games, some educational stuff. Um, and there will be super secret surprises confirmed. Uh, yeah. And so that's awesome. If you want to, those ticketed events are really cool. And we kind of have to be that way. Cause we don't have enough room for everybody at those tables. We don't have enough room for everybody at that. That's very intimate world building workshop you're gonna have with Dwayne um who's one of the best world builders I've ever had the pleasure to meet or work oh. with uh yeah it's, it's true I'm not even blown smoke um and um those would have to be ticketed but there's gonna be lots of stuff that we're doing that aren't ticketed so uh Devin and Alex are doing a intro to D&D kind of beginner's guide they're doing that on Friday to kind of set the tone for everybody who maybe isn't super familiar with the rules um, my D and D Sunday school sermon is going to be free for anybody who wants to show up on Sunday morning. It's going to be kind of first come first serve. There's going to be plenty of stuff you don't have to pay extra for if you don't have 
the extra dollars to sling out, but some of the stuff we just, I mean, we have to cut it off somewhere, and why not? Uh, you know what I just realized? Money? That Devin and I yeah. are running the D&D thing for new people, the two people that forget their own spells and moves the most. We're the best beginners he's ever known. Like <laughs> That's true. Yeah, so do beginners. Uh, yeah, so exactly. Beginners. Uh, We're going to be playing so good at this. For almost two years and still in beginner status you're the best yep. people i know to run these tables it's been a it's been a minute <laughs> Kevin, it's been a we we played when i lived in kentucky so yep. it's been a minute yep uh anyways uh let's wrap this up we have more sessions to record yeah, we'll wrap it up yeah put a bow on it yeah. it's almost holiday season it'll be perfect let's do this it's holiday season <laughs> Bye. Uh, scoop do scoop. Like a like a like a like a <laughs> like a 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 like